After I got back from this trip you're seeing footage from now, I was feeling pretty exhausted. I had been working non-stop with my other ongoing projects and had not been resting properly between the mind shifts. As I sat down the following morning, cleaning my gear, loading in the footage, doing the usual routine, I still felt a bit off and I wasn't paying proper attention. I always have a sequence I follow when I do things. A fail-safe system to make sure I get everything logged and ready for editing. But this day, I kinda made a horrible mistake. I accidentally managed to format the wrong memory card, losing every image I had taken the previous day. And it felt gut-wrenching. This is the first time I've managed to do something like this, and in the beginning, I didn't handle it very well. Luckily, I was home alone. After much digging though, I found some decent software that helped me bring back almost every single deleted image, losing very little. Although I lost nearly 40% of the images, I felt really, really lucky. But during that time, when the images were gone, I thought about a lot of things, and I slowly realized that I started to second guess my work the previous day. Were the images really worth saving? Was it worth the hassle? And did it really matter that they were gone? I realized that this intro sound very dramatic. And you all know that I love a bit of drama. But what I'm trying to convey, to bring across, is that in the end I decided to save the images. And in the process of doing that, I think I made an unconscious choice to trust more in my work as a photographer. Today's images may not be my best work to date, but I took them and I chose to save them. Today is such a rare day. The first frost of the year was this very night and when I got up it was kind of frost all over and there was a baking hot sun and there was absolutely no wind and I have the day off so I decided to just come down to the seaside and explore a bit because lately I've been really focusing I've been uh, really hung up with these sea canyons as I like to call them these uh, these kind of uh, canyons in the in on the shore side that's been shaped by the sea for centuries these round half crescent walls and I've been exploring quite a few of them lately and I'm always looking for more of them. It's kind of like you know if you go abroad and you see those bright red canyon walls that's been shaped by long forgotten rivers of the past. Yeah, this is the closest I can get to these those kind of walls and it also reminds me a lot of uh, Svalbard and the when we went below the glacier and kind of explore that uh, river-shaped submerged tunnel underneath the glacier so I'm really enjoying those so right now there's a lot of noise as you can probably hear I'm on a giant boulder in the middle of the ocean so these waves are making a lot of noise so I'm, I apologize for that I will move in momentarily that being said it's a beautiful day to do some seascape photography so I'm pretty sure we won't come home empty-handed all right let's go See, this is a place where the waves like to crash in during high winds. Look at this. Sands everywhere. So this is definitely kind of a small canyon that probably the waves are just crashing in here. Blowing all kinds of things up here, in here. Found another one here, but it's, it's too narrow. Close, but no cigar. That's the third one, which is almost there, but not quite. 
I took a gamble and I went out on these huge kind of, uh, I'm not sure the word for it is in English, the kind of is a mountain thing that goes out to sea. And I hoped I could find a sea canyon at the end because there, there often are on, on kind of terrain like I'm on right now. But alas, I came to the end and it was a dead end. It's a really cool mountain though, uh, right over there. But this was a dead end. So, uh, I wasted 30 minutes. <laughs> no, not wasted. But we have to get back and uh, explore further on. That way you can't see so much because there's a really bright sun. But I'm pretty confident that there's something good over there. Look at the lines there. So that tip right there, that's where I was just a minute ago, or 20 minutes ago, as it time would have it. Uh, so I've come over to the other side, and this right of the bat looks way more interesting than that side. If you take a look here, beautiful cliff there, where the waves are crashing in. And there's this little pathway here, but I like this. I like this, I like this place a lot. It has a bit more potential, I think. So I'm really curious now, right, what's right next little hill there, mountainside. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so I'm a bit more further on where I filmed the last time, and I've stumbled over this little, beautiful little thing. And I have to admit that this is by far the most interesting place so far today and uh, it's worth exploring a bit more uh, intimate so to speak to see if we can find any composition here. It has these beautiful rocks in the foreground if you can see here kind of almost pebble-ish and then the seawater starts and there's some jagged small rocks along the way and it comes out again at the very end there. So it has a beautiful arc. It hasn't the, the, the canyon, the sea canyon walls, is, it, there, it's not pre present here. Uh, instead there's more of a kind of a jagged culture going on. But I, I think kind of like that as well. So definitely worth exploring. And right over here, if you join me for a bit, while I'm walking on these little rocks here. Here we go, right here. That rock there, I find that very interesting. I think I can use that for something if I set up right here. So that's what I'm going to try to do. I've landed on a composition and uh, I kind of like it. It's not, it's not all bad. And I've done something I have rarely done while out photographing. And that is that I've manually set my white balance because I thought the, the auto white balance was completely mental down here. I'm using this rock in the foreground, which I talked about earlier. And it's quite good because the ceiling, if, let's, let's call it the ceiling, this part right here has this beautiful arc. And it comes out right over there. And right over here, right over the camera, is this rock, my foreground interest, so to speak. I'm photographing the scene in a non-destructive 4x3 crop. I think it fits the scene because the, the, the ceiling kind of clips the top right over the midpoint in the composition. And it kind of balances the rock pretty well because the rock is slightly to the left of the, of the middle. So I kind of like it. HDR, I'm gonna do two exposures, one for the bright areas and one for the dark areas. And I'm gonna combine them in Lightroom and if you wonder how I do that, you can watch that video where I talk you through the process. All right, enough uh, talking by me. Let's take this image.
down in the canyon and it's huge much bigger than I thought but it's it's way too wide for what I'm looking for it's pretty cool though it's just way too wide I absolutely love the colors on the rocks this really almost dark red color and this wall right here on, on the left side that wall is pretty pretty good looking but as it is right now I don't see an image however I don't think it will but if the Sun had set right here in the middle this could be a very beautiful spot for sunset photography uh, I don't think it will set there today I think it will set more there just to the left of the frame it's pretty good though pretty good definitely a, a place I'll store in the back of my mind now I need to get back up well 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 what have we here now this looks interesting this place I can get behind to be a bit careful here as I descend into the, the madness so to speak wow really cool look here see that that is a cave wow I really want to get down there but I'm afraid I'm afraid that I will not climb down there without a rope because it's pretty high down and I am pretty sure I will struggle to get back up without a rope however there might be a way in from the other side so I'll have a look there so this location has danger written all over it Whoa. it's pretty high down here you know what I'll risk it I'll get down there and have a look see you know what if those walls are slippery because of the seawater I'm not gonna be able to get back up without something to hold on to so I'm not sure if I'm gonna risk it to be honest no it's stupid I'm gonna get back up but looking at it I think I think it's a good spot to be honest I just want to be I, I just want to have two people here when I do this because it's just not worth it risking it alone anything can happen if I fall and I bang my head that would be a bad thing so it's good not to take any unnecessary risks so to speak I'm gonna go over this mountain here I'm gonna go over there and see if I can set up for a sunset image and call it a day because I'm getting really tired in my legs and if I fall because I'm tired I can really hurt myself and I don't want that so let's just sneak our way over the hill I made it but at what cost my friends what cost you see that way off in the distance that is actually a commando bunker from the Second World War so those remnants are still there and I've been there a couple of times it's, it's not to be honest not my cup of tea uh, but I know a lot of people find them interesting it's a beautiful place though if you manage to look past all the horrors of the war so this is not an ideal spot for for the sunset I'll be honest 
But there is this beautiful little lighthouse there. I'm gonna zoom in on it so you can see it. Again, not my typical subject, but it's kind of nice anywho, the way the light kind of reflects of the side of the lighthouse. Just for fun, I've put up a time lapse of the sunset because that's uh, always nice to see. And I've tried to think a bit outside the box. And I'm using my 100 to 300 millimeter micro four thirds lens. So I'm in 600 millimeter on a full frame camera towards a little heather bush directly behind the sunset. And the result is quite interesting because everything is uh, beautiful bokeh around and this just gorgeous colors in the background and it looks really really nice so i'm just taking this image once every two minutes as the color are changing so right now i'm on f9 uh, two thousand of a second and that is approximately uh, f9 is probably f18 on the full frame camera i think which is quite high, but it gives me a beautiful background. I'm using a four second shutter delay to make sure that the camera is completely still. And I put the focus on the heather bush. I think this is quite beautiful. I love the really bright orange this gives me towards the heather. I'm liking this image. I come all the way, I'm looking for sea canyons, and this is what I get back with. A little picture of a heather bush against a beautiful backdrop. It's not a bad day, eh? Not a bad day at all. Well, girls and boys, the sun has set and so have I. It's about high time that I start moving my nose back to the car, I guess. All right, uh, thank you so much for watching my video this week. And if you liked it, leave a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, I greatly appreciate if you do it. It really helps with the exposure on my channel and uh, uh, yeah, I appreciate all the help I can get. Until next time, take good care of each other and have a great weekend and we'll speak soon. Hare fint, alle